Hello, my name is Stiley Hayward. I would like to welcome you to the Blessed Hope Ministry. We are a King James grounded family Bible study. These lessons are not to be a substitute for regular church attendance. Nightly I direct my family through the Bible by chapter and verse. We request you to join us and to study from God and His Son Jesus Christ. You may have permission to like, send, or encourage our studies with family or friends. Edification of what God has and what He desires in our life. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. You may use our studies, but I request that you do not abuse them. For YouTube videos, subscribe below for more videos. And place the thumbs up and leave a comment or email me. Thank you. Genesis 41. And it came to pass at the end of two full years. Joseph is in jail. The baker did not remember him. The butler. The butler did not remember, remember him. And Pharaoh dreamed. And behold, he stood by the river. Now you see what was set up in chapter 40. These two men have a dream. Now Pharaoh's going to have a dream. And the next man to the importance of the king of Egypt, the cupbearer, is one man that had a dream that came to pass exactly as it was. God is setting up Joseph. As we I'm telling you what the story is going to happen is, there's a big famine coming. And if God doesn't put Joseph where he is, Jacob and his sons are going to die. Joseph has dreams, and those dreams are going to be fulfilled soon to come past if the Lord tarries as we go into Genesis. God is working this whole thing out. And you say, well, why is Joseph in jail? There's a reason. And Joseph does not know. There are things in our life that happens in our life. Why, God? We don't know until it comes to pass. Pharaoh dreamed, and behold, he stood by the river, which would probably be the Nile River. And behold, there came up out of the river seven well-favored kind and fat flesh. They're, they're, they're fat, they're big, they're going to be juicy. And they fed in the meadow. So they come out of the river. They're perfect for, for butchering, and they're eating. We see in Revelation, I don't know if there's an account here, but we see the beasts that come out of the sea. Here are beasts coming out of the river. And behold, seven other kind came up after out of the river. So these fat, well-favored ones, they come out and they start eating. Next comes these weak, sickly, diseased, came out of the river, ill-favored and lean flesh. You see their bones. And stood by the other kind upon the brink of the water, river. So they're at the bank of the river. There's a meadow there. The fat ones are eating. And the ill favor and lean flesh, no, see their bones, not that much meat, kind did eat up the seven well flavored and fat kind. So Pharaoh awoke. This dream is a dream of a dream of, whoa, what's going on here? Now, in my studies, I have found that they say cows will eat chicken. And there were videos of live chickens being devoured by cows. But I don't know if a cow would devour another cow alive. Pharaoh's dream stops. He wakes up. And there would be more to the dream when we look at the next dream. But he woke up. And he goes back to sleep. And he slept and dreamed the second time. And behold, seven ears of corn, wheat. Not the corn that we think of popcorn and, and kernels of corn. Wheat. Came up upon the stalk, rank and good. This is what the cattle would feed on. 
Now that rank, let's look at verse 22 real quick. And the description. Scripture with scripture. And I saw in my dream, and behold, seven ears came up in one stalk, full and good. So the rank in verse 5 means full. Here comes this stalk, and it's just loaded with grains. With the barley, whatever, we don't not, not told if it's barley or wheat, but it's full. It's like the fat cattle. There's a lot of meat. And behold, seven thin ears, and blasted with the east wind. East wind causes destruction in the Bible. Sprung up after them. So there are healthy cows, there are sick cows. There is healthy uh, corn, there is not so healthy corn. Seems to be a little, verily, verily, I say unto you here. And the seven thin ears devoured the seven rank and full ears. There's the definition. And Pharaoh woke and behold it was a dream. Now we know wheat does not eat other wheat. But here... Like the cows, the weak wheat, the wheat, the weak wheat devoured the good wheat. The weak cows devoured the good cows. And it came to pass in the morning that his spirit, Pharaoh's spirit, was troubled. <laughs> what on earth just happened here? Nebuchadnezzar is going to have a dream like this. And he's going to be troubled. And both Pharaoh and Nebuchadnezzar are going to call on magicians. Focus, focus, tell me what my dream is. And they call on men of God to get the answers. And God gives these men answers. Because again, there's no Bible written. And we got to protect the children of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob or Israel. So, and he sent and called for all the magicians of Egypt. You'll find magicians in your Bible of Egypt and Babylon. You don't find them in the church. You want, you want to go King James? Let's go King James. Egypt's a type of world and Babylon's a type of religion. What are you going to do with that one? In the name of Jesus Christ, I call and all the wise men thereof. So there are magicians and there are wise men. And Pharaoh told them his dream. Nebuchadnezzar has it easy. He says, listen guys, you tell me the dream. <laughs> I like Nebuchadnezzar. Well, we can't tell you who to you guys, No, no, no. I won't find out if you guys are liars. If you can't tell me my dream, you've been lying to me. And I'm going to kill you all. Pharaoh gets up and says, oh, I had this dream. And and all the wise men thereof and Pharaoh told them his dream, but there was none that could interpret them unto Pharaoh. God can do what wise men cannot do. These are the wise men of all Egypt. Study Egypt. They're what? How did they build those, those pyramids? How did they build that sphinx? They had to be wise. They had to be smart. And yet they don't know what God has to say. You can be Ph.D., doctor, you can have all the diplomas on your wall, but if you don't know what God says, you don't know nothing. There's a Bible, wisdom, understanding, and knowledge of God. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. A doctor may be able to, hand, may be able to hand, handle a cancer, but if he dies and ends up in hell, he didn't know nothing about God and Jesus Christ. Then spanked the chief butler unto Pharaoh. We remember him. Chapter 40. And put. Uh, uh, this? I do remember my faults this day. Oh, what did you do wrong? Pharaoh was wroth with his servants. Chapter 40. Two years ago. And put me in ward prison. In the captain of the guard's house. Both me and the chief baker. Chapter 40. And we dreamed a dream in one night. So here is Pharaoh. He's at his table. Here comes the butler. He's preparing the great Jews. We already discussed that. He's got the magicians, the wise men around. He's telling his dream. They're like, uh, 
You know. And as the chief butler is doing his work, boing. Oh. I remember there was a man that told me, please mention something to Pharaoh. Now, Joseph got the answer to his dream, uh, his prayer. Please talk to Pharaoh about me because I'm not supposed to be in here, but I'm innocent. Two years later, Joseph's dream is answered. God is patient. Pharaoh was wroth with his servants and put me in ward in the captain of the guard's house, both me and the chief baker. And we dreamed the dream one night, I and he. We dream each man according to the interpretation of his dream. And there was there with us a young man, an Hebrew, Joseph. Servant to the captain of God. This Hebrew's in jail is in charge of the prison. <laughs> That's Joseph. That describes who we're talking about, the Bible. And we told him, and he interpreted to us our dream. Remember what Joseph said to him? God shall interpret your dreams, chapter 40, verse, where is that? Verse 8. And Joseph said unto them, Do not interpretations belong to God. They forgot God. He forgot to mention God. He said Joseph. You know Joseph's going to come up and, and he's going to change that. He's going to correct that. Joseph is going to correct the Bible of what this man said. <laughs> so he says, he, Joseph, has the interpretation to us our dreams, to each man according to his dream, and he did interpret. Joseph said God. God told him what was going to happen. Why? For what is happening in chapter 41. And he came to pass, as he interpreted to us, so it was, me he restored unto my office, and him he hanged. Now, you just imagine if Pharaoh's like, yeah, I remember that day too. I don't know. Then Pharaoh sent and called Joseph and brought him hastily out of the dungeon type of resurrection. Those doors were sealed. No one could come out of their own accord. Dungeon that describes what the prison is and ain't air conditioning We read today that Jeremiah was put into a prison and what did it say give him a piece of bread every day <laughs> a piece of bread That's it in sloppy water One place he's put in the prison and he's sinking in mire gooey mud And he shaved himself, and this is a ritual of the Egyptians. Egyptian men shaved everything. If I can put it like that. They plucked their eyebrows, their eyelashes. It was a ritual. You did not appear before Pharaoh as a man unshaved. So this is not just his face. And changed his raiment, so... Joseph is going by the laws, Romans 13, of the government that he's in. He is obeying the law. Shaving your entire body right now is not a violation of law because God had not set any laws. Joseph, yes, sir. Pharaoh wants to see you. Can I have a razor? Yes, sir, you better. There's no rebellion against the government here. And came in unto Pharaoh. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I have dreamed a dream. I've heard that before. And there is none that can interpret it. My wise men and my, mag my magicians, my butler, nobody can tell me this dream. I don't know if he told his wife. No one can give me this dream. It has to be a dream that has to be interpreted. Something about this dream. I mean, you tell me this is the only dream that Pharaoh ever had? These two? I doubt it. 
I have dreamed a dream. There is none that can interpret it. And I have heard, I have heard say of thee that thou, that's what the butler said, verse 12, I know this man in prison, that thou canst understand a dream to interpret it. Now, now look at that definition. Thou can understand a dream to interpret. What's interpret a dream? To make understanding. And what's one of the things that God can give man? Understanding. There it is. See, the Bible is self-interpreting. You very rarely will need a dictionary with the Bible. You'll need a dictionary, but most of the time, the Bible will interpret itself. And Joseph answered Pharaoh, saying, Yes, of, of great authority do I have the power of tea leaves and crystal balls and everything like that. No, no. He says, It is not in me. God shall give Pharaoh an answer of peace. Look at that. Give him the authority back to God. The butler said, This man can do it. And Joseph said, No, 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 no. I can't do nothing. I'm just as bad as your magician. I'm just as bad as your wise man. But God is able. He's talking to a man that believes in every kind of God. God of frogs, God of darkness, God of the sun, God of the night. Recognize kind of things that God's going to do to Egypt. Each of those ten plagues was upon the gods of the Egypt. And that's not, there are more gods of the Egyptians. Joseph walks up to Pharaoh, the leader of this entire nation, says there's one God. You know who Pharaoh was? To the people, he was a god. He walks up to Pharaoh and says, "I, I deny your you being a god. God is God." That took some a little effort there. Give Pharaoh an answer of peace. What's the peace here? So you know what your dream is. You stop worrying about it. <laughs> and Pharaoh said to Joseph, "In my dream." Behold, I stood upon the bank of the river. Probably the Nile. Remember, he washed himself there. Exodus. His daughters would go down there and wash themselves, drink. And behold, there came up out of the river seven kind, fat flesh, well favored, and they fed in the meadow. Or we heard that. And behold, seven other kind came up after them. Poor. Ooh, there's another description. Poor. And very ill-favored and lean flesh. I mean, they're just pathetic. Such as I never saw in all the land of Egypt for badness. I have never seen these cows as bad as they ever been. These cows were bad. They worship cows. Go ask Aaron. Or oh, threw in these golden earrings and out back this this yeah right sure Aaron. Calves was one of the things they worshipped, and here is a calf of their god, I forget what the name of it, and he, he's sick. And the lean and the ill-favored kind did eat up the first seven fat kind. Now we're going to get a little extra note here. And when they had eaten them, it could not be known that they had eaten them. But they were still ill-favored, as at the beginning, so I awoke. You would think that these ill-favored cows, if they had eaten other seven cows, they would be a little more healthier. No, they were still the worst. It did them no good. They were still sickly cows. And that woke him up. And I saw in my dream, and behold, seven ears came up in one stalk. Full, we saw that, and good. And behold, seven ears within them, uh, with withered, thin, and blasted with the east wind, sprung up after them. I mean, they're just dead. Dead. And the thin ears devoured the seven good ears. And I told this unto the magicians, but there was none that could declare it unto me. Well, what is this thing? What is this thing? Cows eating cows and wheat eating wheat. Tell me, magnificent go, magician. I can't tell you. Come on, Dr. PhD, tell me. I, I can't tell you. Whatever they call it, your highness, whatever they call them. I told the magician, but there was none that could de declare it into me. 
So it shows you the magicians are not working with God. Because had the magicians worked with God, God would say, okay, here, tell Pharaoh. Right? So don't go tell me magicians and, and God are, are together. They're not. We'll get that in the book of Exodus when the magicians drive away Pharaoh. But right now, let's talk about this one. And Joseph said unto Pharaoh, the dream of Pharaoh is one. It's one dream. Okay. God has showed Pharaoh that he is a he showed Pharaoh what he is about to do. God. Pharaoh, I'm about to do something. I'm gonna reveal to it by a dream. It's a verily, verily. One set of cows, verily, one set of wheat, verily. Verily, verily. Pay attention, Pharaoh. Notice how that shows up in the Old Testament, how Jesus would say, very, very. How some of the stories of the Gospels are repeated two, three, four times. Pay attention. It's important. Pharaoh, you woke up after the cows. Yeah. All right, go back to sleep. Da, 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 da. This is so important. I'm going to have you dream the same dream with another illustration. This is important, Pharaoh. And Pharaoh has to listen to God and not Satan, the magicians. Because this is in the hand of the one that controls weather, controls animals, and controls men. Pharaoh has to deny his God to, to obey God. Write that one down. He has to repent of his, and he will by the end of this chapter he will repent of his gods to serve the god of joseph or he would die and god would have to set somebody else in so what he is about to do god the seven good kind are seven years and the seven good years are seven years the dream is one verily verily Good kind, good years, good seven years. The seven thin and ill-favored kind that came up after them are seven years. Seven years, and then there's another seven-year period. And the seven empty years blasted with the east wind shall be seven years of famine. There are seven good years, we know, and there are seven bad years. Okay, got that down. This is the thing which I have spoken unto Pharaoh. God is saying, I'm speaking unto you, Pharaoh. I use the dream to get your attention. I am speaking to Joseph. Okay, now here's the problem. Men wrote the Bible. Okay, but who is God speaking to? He is speaking to Joseph as Joseph or somebody is recording this for our learning. God spoke to Pharaoh by Joseph, and yes, somebody wrote it down, but God did the speaking. Jeremiah, how did Beirut write this, this role? Well, Jeremiah spoke in my ears, and I wrote what he told me to write. Well, where did Jeremiah get it from? He got it from God. We read that as a family today. What God is about to do, he showeth unto Pharaoh. Now, that's interesting. It doesn't show Joseph or Israel or any of the 12 sons. He shows Pharaoh. The Walmart of this time. Everybody went down to Egypt. The Israelites went down to Egypt with Joseph. Jacob will go down to Egypt. For food. Egypt is the center of commerce. So. Behold. There come seven years of great plenty. And I think the candy bar would be called good and plenty. Comes out of the King James 1611 Bible. Throughout all the land of Egypt. Egypt is going to have seven years of crops. And they're going to have over crops. 
I hope they don't build a concrete jungle. And there shall arise after the seven years famine. Seven years of plenty, seven years of famine. And all the plenty shall be forgotten in the land of Egypt, and the famine shall consume the land. He's going to gather all this up, but it's going to be gone. The crops are going to fail. The cows are going to fail. That's what the dream said. The cows may eat, but they're still going to be ill-favored. Those stalks are going to come up dead and produce nothing. That's what the dream is. And the plenty shall not be known in the land by reason of that famine falling, for it shall be very grievous. There was a time of Abraham that there was a famine that he went down to Egypt. There was a time of famine in, in Isaac. He went down to Gerar and God said, don't go any further. There is a time of famine in the book of Ruth and they went into Moab. Famine is God's judgment when you're doing wrong. Mark the famines in the Bible. And for that, the dream was doubled, verily, verily, unto Pharaoh. Twice, verily, verily. It is because the thing is established by God, and God shall shortly bring it to pass. It's an important. It's of great importance. God controls famine. You say, well, why are people starving in India? God controls it. You want cows and monkeys and giraffes and all that as your gods, and you want them to run around, and you can't kill them? Starve. Take those people off the television. Don't give them no money. Let their gods take care of them. Those cows are running around, and they're starving to death. That's wrong. Let their gods take care. That's the Bible doctrine. It's not my doctrine. That's God. Let God take care. God told Judah, all right, fine. You know what? Babylon's going to come. They're going to destroy this land. I do not even pray for them. Let your gods help you out. That's what he's saying. Now therefore, let Pharaoh look out a man discreet and wise. Magicians, the wise men. And set him over the land of Egypt. Find a man, not men. Notice that one. Find a man, not men. That's Joseph saying, out of the mouth of God, find a man. You know, there's only one man, a man, that can take care of my sin. There's only one man approved by God. That is Jesus Christ. Joseph is going to be again in this chapter as we're coming through the quote. He's going to be again the greatest type of Jesus Christ. You better find the man. A lamb of God. The lamb of God. Your lamb of God. You're coming up to the book of Exodus here about that lamb from the Passover. I'm getting excited. Yeah, I love Jesus Christ. I love reading about Jesus Christ. And it's Joseph. Let Pharaoh do this. Let now notice. Let Pharaoh do it. He's not demanding Pharaoh. Pharaoh has a free will right now. He can do it or not do it. God will find somebody else if he doesn't do it. Let Pharaoh do this and let him appoint officers. Okay, now his group of people over the land and take the fifth part of the land of Egypt in the seventh plentiest years. That is 20%. That's the first taxation found in the Bible. 20% of your, your grains, your food, so we can feed other people. That's taxation right there. And it's by Joseph for telling Pharaoh, why don't you have a tax of food? This taxation by God through Joseph to Pharaoh so the people can survive. Oh, I don't want to pay taxes. I'm going to form a tea party. And you're going to suffer because taxes is what brought Joseph and Mary to the city where Jesus Christ was to be born. Jesus, are we supposed to pay taxes? Well, show me a coin. Render unto Caesar the things that are Caesar's. Render unto God the things that are God. 
Peter, are we supposed to pay taxes or who pays the? Well, Lord, you know, they pay the tax. Well, I'll tell you what. Go fishing, get yourself a coin, and pay your taxes so they don't get offended. That's a tax report in the Bible. Romans 13, that Joseph is obeying Pharaoh. Romans 13 says you're supposed to pay your dues, your tribute. If you don't, you're in violation not only of the government, you're in violation of the Word of God, Old Testament, New Testament, and church age. This is before the law. And he said, go out there, get 20%. Oh, I love this chat. I am so excited. And let them gather all the food of those good years, seven years, that come and lay up the corn under the hand of Pharaoh. Pharaoh's in charge. And let them keep food in the cities. So they're going to have big food banks. That the food shall be for store. Oh, there's where you get the name store. Why do they call it a store? Grocery store. Hardware store. King James 611. To the land against the seven years of famine. In other words, these seven good years, you collect it because seven bad years are coming. This is a very wise thing Joseph is saying. I wonder what, if this would happen in America. If God would speak to the President of the United States, whoever it would be, and say, listen, I'm about to judge this country. And brother, you better realize by the Bible, the King James 16 and 11 Bible, that I've said my preachers aren't you. I am going to judge your nation. And you're going to get your butt judged. I want the President of the United States would listen as much as Pharaoh would listen. Didn't Jesus say about the cities this time? It'd be more tolerable than Sodom and Gomorrah than you. You got me right here, Jesus Christ. Here I am. Be more tolerable than Listen, if I was here in Sodom and Gomorrah, if I was here in Tyre, they would repent it. And now you got a nation where you got a full Bible, King James Bible. You can get it. You can read it. It's online. You can get it in print. You can find out what God expects from you. I wonder if a nation will listen. Pharaoh does. I'm excited. I love it. And that food shall be for store to the land against the seven years of famine, which shall be in the land of Egypt. That usually has a bad condemnation. That the land perish not through the famine. God's not willing that any should perish. Stock up the food. You wonder how many Egyptians during this time with Pharaoh listening to Joseph and God. You wonder how many Egyptians got right with God before the law that they would probably find their names in their works in the Lamb's Book of Life in the Revelation chapter 20. You ever wonder that? Is Pharaoh's name? He is listening to God speaking. God has told him to Joseph, I'm speaking to you, Pharaoh. And he obeys. And he defies his gods. I wonder if Pharaoh's name is going to be in the last book of life. You know what his works are? I want you to get one person. I want you to gather up that famine because you're going to take care of a group of people. Okay, Lord. Yes, sir, Lord. Doesn't it not say at the end of the tribulation God will separate the sheep nation from the goat nation and the sheep nations have helped the children of Israel? I will bless them that bless you. Pharaoh is going to bless the Israelites. I wonder if he's going to be in heaven by his good works. And that's good works. God said, I'll bless them that bless you. And he's going to bless them. I'm excited. Which shall be in the land of Egypt, in the land perish not through the famine. God's not willing that any should bear it. And the thing was good in the eyes of Pharaoh. Well, why don't say ears, eyes? Did Joseph draw it out? Is there a role describing what? Is it possible? You can throw this in the ground. Is it possibly that? I know Moses wrote Genesis, but is it possible Genesis 41 has been laid out, written by Joseph? One of them lost books? Because it says eyes. He saw. Now, should we go look for the lost scroll 41? No. And in the eyes of all his servants, including the, the butler, maybe the magicians, and the wise men 
everyone that is there. Everyone in that room, everyone in that meeting. Wow, that's a great idea. You know what everybody in this room says? Says God is God. We're going to listen to him. You couldn't get that in Congress of the United States of America 2017. No way. No way. This Egyptian nation is better than the United States of America. They are listening to God. I am excited. I'm having a great time here. And Pharaoh said unto his servants, Can we find such a one as this is a man, a man, I'm Joseph, a man, in whom the Spirit of God is the Holy Spirit. Pharaoh acknowledges in Joseph, you got the Holy Spirit. And Joseph is not speaking in tongues, he's not healing, he's not blabbering. You have given wise counsel. That wise counsel came from God. You got the Holy Spirit. Ooh. Oh, the President of the United States would recognize somebody preaching on the street or knocking on door or giving out gospel tracts, and that man has the Spirit of God for salvation. Probably not. I'm not mentioning any president's name. I'm saying any president. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, For as much as capital G God, oh, has showed thee, God has shown you. Forget the crocodile God. Forget Horus. That God of Joseph has shown you. He's saying, there is none so discreet and wise. Well, there's wise men. <laughs> Forget Satan's wise men. Forget the worldly wise. You're the wisest as thou art. You know who else has, has been given that title? Daniel. Ooh. Dare to be a Joseph. Dare to be a Daniel. Study Joseph. Study Daniel. And you'll get what God expects from you. We need more Daniels and we need more Joseph. So they can go to the leaders of these nations. And walk up to them. And proclaim the word of God. And Like we read in Jeremiah today. Maybe they won't listen. Maybe they'll burn the word. Thou shalt be over my house. You know when Jesus sat on the right hand of the Father after the death, burial, and resurrection, after the torture and suffering, you realize the Bible says, I think it's Galatians, he has sat it down and he has been put all things under his foot. The angels rejoice today when a lost man comes to the saving grace of Jesus Christ. They don't rejoice over a, a football, basketball team, or anything like that. They rejoice when a lost man comes to God and gets saved. And according, watch this one, according unto thy word. Ooh, there's Jesus. All the times he said, him that's my family, if they obey and do my word. And the wise man built his house upon a rock because he has done what my word has said. Shall all my people be ruled? The entire world will be ruled by what Joseph or Jesus says. You realize Jesus has the power to tell you you're saved or you're going to hell. But Lord, didn't I do that? But Lord, did, depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. I never knew you. Yeah, but Joseph and God are the same. But Jesus Christ and God are the same. And Joseph is a type of Jesus Christ. And he's given the power as with Pharaoh. Pharaoh becomes a type of Jesus, a type of God. And we'll see that in a few in a few verses. All my people be ruled only in the throne will I be greater than thou. Now, with the Trinity of God, there is God has authority. He is the top of the Godhead. Jesus is the second of the Godhead. The Holy Spirit is of the third of the Godhead. Yet, yet they're one. And yet God still has a little more authority. We can't explain that. We cannot get into the Trinity. Because I can't explain the Trinity. But here's like in Pharaoh to God the Father. Joseph, type of Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit is showing up in verse. you got the Trinity in chapter 41. That's interesting. 
And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, See, Pharaoh's got eyes. See, I have set thee over all the land of Egypt. Egypt's the type of the world. Jesus Christ is seated over all the world. Satan's reign is only, he said, only but a moment. When he tells Jesus, I'll give you all this in a moment of time. Jesus Christ will come back and reign over the entire earth in the millennium. And Pharaoh took off his ring, that's the authority, from his hand and put it upon Joseph's hand. That is the ring of God, that is the authority of the king, and he takes it off his hand and gives it to Joseph, your God, your the king. From a man who is called God. And hands it over to Joseph. And arrayed him in vestures of fine linen. Fine linen is the, is the, is, I forget, of the righteousness of the saints. We had just jumped all the way into Revelation 19. And put a gold chain about his neck. That gold chain represents royalty. That represents you are rich. I'm going to say Joseph got, yeah, Joseph got a golden ring. Of course, we just read it. Uh, Daniel, I believe, gets a golden chain. Run Joseph and Daniel together. And he made him to ride in the second chariot. God the Father, God the Son. David speaks about that, that chariot of God that is the Ark of the Covenant. Uh, Ezekiel speaks about this thing that's got wheels and a cherubim. That's interesting. Right in the second chariot, which he had. It belongs to Pharaoh. Joseph, it's yours. And they cried before him, bow the knee. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and confess that Jesus is Lord. I like that one. <laughs> And he made him ruler over all the land of Egypt. Jesus will be king of kings and lord of lords. Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I am Pharaoh, I am God. And without thee shall no man lift up his hand or foot in the land of Egypt. You are in charge of him. You tell them, move your right foot, move your left foot, move it all about, do the hokey pokey. You know, Jesus was there. The Catholics have got another name for that game called Simon Says. I don't follow no Pope. I follow what Jesus says. Isn't that interesting? I love this. I'm having a good time. And Pharaoh, turn page, one turn page. And Pharaoh called Joseph's name Zephyrsaphanita. Lord, forgive me. Revealer of secret things. That's what his name. He told that, that dream. The interpretation. That's what his name is. And, that he, and he gave him the wife, Aseneth, the daughter of Polyphaphron, priest, <laughs> Revelation 1, there's a Gentile bride for Joseph and of the priest. Revelation 1. Oh, I love on. There's got to be something on on. You're supposed to be on the Lord, serving the Lord. And Joseph went out over all the land of Egypt. He went everywhere. Oh. And Joseph was 30 years old. What was Jesus' age when he began his ministry? About 30. I love this Bible. I love God. It's great. So, 28 years old was he in that prison. And younger. It said two years. After two years. 28 years old was when he interpreted those dreams of the baker and the, uh, uh, the other one, the butler. He was 30 years old when he stood before Pharaoh 
king of Egypt. So Jesus Christ on his earthly ministry stood before God. He said, no man has seen God at any time, but when you see me, I and the Father are one. Those verses get the Jehovah Witnesses all upset. Uh, uh, Philip said, behold, my God. And Joseph went out of the presence of Pharaoh. How did he go out of the presence of Pharaoh? He left his heavenly abound and came, was born in Bethlehem. Ooh. Ooh, I love the Bible. And went throughout all the land of Egypt, the world. And he went from north to south. He went east to west. I wonder if anybody could figure out how many miles Jesus went. That would be an interesting number. And in the seven plentieth years, the earth brought forth by handfuls. You got to wonder, would this be the seven church ages? But that's something you can think about. Can't prove, I can't prove it. I'm just reading some things here. And there were probably some that did not believe Joseph and did not obey Joseph. I guarantee there are probably many but Pharaoh and his crew and some of these people are few that are listening are doing what God's told one of the things in the plagues of Egypt with the ten plagues God says okay you know you're gonna, if you bring your cattle and your servants in they'll live if you don't they'll die some people did some people didn't and he gathered up all the food for the seven years which were in the land of Egypt, and laid up the food in the cities, the food of the field, which was round about every city, laid he up in the same. We told you it was the fifth part, 20%. And Joseph gathered corn as the sand of the sea. That's not a reference to the Jews. I don't know what it is. Very much until he left numbering. He, he, he can't number no more. He was counting. Fuck, it's too much. For it was without number. You know what the book of Revelation says about the angels and the saints of God? They're without number. You can't number them. And unto Joseph was born two sons before the years of the famine came, which Asherah, the daughter of Pifufra, however you say his name, priest of On, bare unto him. And Joseph called the name of the firstborn Manasseh, which means forgetting. For God said he has made me forget all my toil and all my father's house. Ooh. He forgot everything. Joseph forgot all the bad that was done to him. How do you like that? You want to see God? You want to see God in that verse? Run to John first, first John 1 9. If you confess your sins, he's faithful and just. To forget your sins, forgive. How's that one? And the name of the second is called Ephraim. That means fruitful. <coughs> Excuse me. For God has caused me to be fruitful in the land of my affliction. John chapter 12, verse 24. Isaiah 53 says he shall see his seed. We are to be fruit. In the seven years of plentiness that was in the land of Egypt were ended. Okay, the seven years is done. Joseph is 37 years old. Pages keep turning, sorry. And the seven years of dearth. Now take the D off, you get earth. Take the R off, you get death. Death in the earth. Seven years of tribulation. When Jacob will come with his sons? Isn't that interesting? Quinky dinky. And the seven years of dirt began to come, according as Joseph had said. And the dirt was in all lands, but in all the land of Egypt there was bread. So it had to have been wheat or barley. And where in all the land of Egypt was famished, not much to eat. The people cried to Pharaoh for bread, for bread, for bread. John chapter 6. 
Oh. And Pharaoh said unto all the Egyptians, Go unto Joseph. Oh, what he saith to you do. That is the words of Jesus' mother in John chapter 4. Whatsoever my son saith, do it. I am excited. And the famine was over all the face of the earth. And Joseph opened all the storehouses. Revelation 12. And sold unto the Egyptians. And the famine waxed sore in the land. It got worse, it got worse, it got worse of Egypt. And all countries came into Egypt to Joseph for to buy corn. Everybody knows about Joseph. Everybody knows Joseph's name. And what does he have to offer them? Bread. I am the bread of life. And the famine was so sore in all lands. What a wonderful, great, happy, exhilarating chapter. Praise God. 